Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran here in Warren, Oregon. Today I'm preaching on Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It was Labor Day weekend. My son was in Job Corps in Roseburg, Oregon, and I decided to drive down from Spokane to spend the weekend with him. Well, I picked Eric up by noon on Saturday. It was the first time to the coast for both of us. So we spent the rest of that day and the next exploring the beach, riding four-wheelers on the dunes, and eating lots of fresh seafood. Sunday evening, we were starting to look for a motel room. We stopped at every place we could find around Newport, all full. We drove on to Lincoln City, all full. We continued heading north. I realized we would have to get away from the coast to find a vacancy. That was when I learned that there is nothing heading inward, inland. By 1 a.m., I pulled over in an empty parking lot. I just can't drive anymore, I said. I've got to get some sleep. So we laid our seats back and slept in the car for about an hour and a half. When I woke up, I started driving again. At 3.30 in the morning, we were approaching a more urban area and found a Holiday Inn with a vacancy. When I saw that lit vacancy sign, it was like I saw a giant neon sign saying, you are welcome here. Yeah, verse 28, Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I prefer the NIV version. All you who are weary and burdened, you are welcome here. You are loved here. Come, weary travelers, come to your forever home. Jesus spoke this welcome for weary souls over 2,000 years ago, but it's needed just as much today. Think how many ways we have to express our weariness. I'm exhausted. I'm stretched to the limit. I'm bone tired, drained, done in. I'm beat. I'm running on fumes. I'm so burned out. We live in a fast paced world where we are often expected to be overachievers hurrying, rushing, working too hard for too long until our energy levels are depleted. And Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. On the base of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor is written, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. However, these huddled masses may find themselves turned back by quotas, walls, or immigration officers. Our nation's homeless problem has reached a staggering size. When life throws a speed bump at a low-income family, they find themselves evicted. But low-income housing is full. Capacity level shelters have to turn people away, and camping in an empty lot is illegal. Teens find themselves thrown out of their homes and end up living on the streets. Newborns are left on doorsteps and in dumpsters. 
The elderly and inconvenient are warehoused and forgotten. And Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and have a burden, and I will give you rest. Jesus had only one qualification. You have to be tired. Tired of life and the system kicking you around. Yes, but more than that, tired of trying to measure up. Tired of justifying yourself. Tired of living the life of a broken person in a fallen world. Tired of carrying your load of stress and trouble by yourself. Notice, Jesus says, I will give you rest. He does not say, I will relieve your burden. Sometimes we may be able to lay down our burden. And sometimes Jesus chooses for us to continue to carry the load. In fact, he may add to our load. Verse 29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. A yoke is heavy. Picture a heavy piece of wood laid across the neck of two oxen. I don't think I could even pick it up. Now the oxen must pull the load attached to them, plus carry the weight of the yoke. But the trick is that the yoke helps them to share the weight of the total load. And they walk and step with each other and pull the, lo the load together. Jesus says we will be yoked with him. It's a yoke custom made for us so that it fits us perfectly. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we are yoked to Christ, we have the assurance that we are never alone. When we are yoked to Christ, he not only offers us strength to carry our burdens, but he offers us his peace, a peace that passes all understanding. And we have peace because of the grace of Christ Jesus that is sufficient in all times and circumstances. Being yoked to Jesus is easier than living our way, making our own plans, saving our own souls as if we could. Being yoked to Jesus is being yoked to the one who brought God's kingdom of justice, mercy, and compassion. In verse 29, Jesus says, Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Learn from me means more than simply listen to my teaching. The Aramaic word that Jesus uses for disciples does not mean just students or pupils. It means apprentices. We are not meant merely to think, but to do. Because my yoke make and I learn how to pull the load by working together, by working beside me and watch how I do it. The load will seem lighter when you allow Jesus, when you let him help you with it. We are to bring Christ to others by being Christ for others. Those living outside of Christ are unevenly yoked to alcohol, drugs, fantasy worlds, sex, power trips, idolatry, self-centeredness, loneliness, despair, self-worship, and a thousand other distractions offered by the evil one to keep people away from Jesus. We as Christians and as members of his church are to walk beside the unevenly yoked and show them where to find rest and relief. This summer we are learning how to be evangelists, how to be witnesses for Christ. The first step to becoming a truly effective witness is to be in relationship with the one to whom we are witnessing. That person needs to trust us 
to trust our word. They need to believe we care. Jesus shows his followers how to care. He says, watch me, learn from me. Now here's one example. Pro-life writer Frederic, Frederica Matthews Green wrote a book called Real Choices about women who choose abortion rather than giving birth. She wrote over and over again, women told me I had an abortion because of a relationship. Most of the time it was the father of the child who was pressuring her to have an abortion. In other cases, it was her parents. In 88% of the cases, the woman had the abortion because someone she loved told her she should. What if a woman in that situation had heard a Christian woman say, you have a choice, I will walk beside you. In the days of the early church, children born and unborn were valued less than cattle. In the Gentile world, fathers had the legal right to dispose of children if they were imperfect. That is, if they were the wrong gender, girls, or the child had a disability. The children were then exposed. The term used for leaving them on the outskirts of town so that they could die, be eaten by wild dogs, or taken by human traffickers. And Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Christians resisted this practice. Instead, they created a zone of radical hospitality. As one church father said, the unborn child is the object of God's care. Christians took these unwanted children, these non-persons, and made them their neighbors even family members. What if a woman in a desperate situation, a woman considering an abortion, had a Christian woman say, you have a choice, I will walk beside you. What if a Christian woman drew our soon-to-be mother into her circle of friends? What if the mother found herself enveloped with love? If she had women in her life who celebrated the anticipated arrival of this child? What if her now Christian friends showed her how to be a loving mother? If the ladies had a shower for her and bought groceries and diapers when she could not work? If they picked her up for church services and at the church the prevailing attitude was, you're welcome here. You're loved here. Welcome home. Jesus is waiting for you. Come in and rest. That is what it would mean to be pro-life. That is what it means to be the church, to proclaim the gospel in word and deeds. To those of you hearing this online, I hope soon that you will come in person and find out what it means to be part of the community of Christ. If you are not already a follower of Christ, it's time to say, I can't. I can't carry this load on my own. Jesus, I'm weary and burdened. I come to you for rest. To those of you who do know Jesus, it's time to tell others where to find rest from this burdened world. Time to love your neighbor as yourself and walk beside them as Jesus would. You've spent three weeks now praying for the 12 people on your list of non-believers. You have prayed for the Holy Spirit to be preparing them to receive your message about Jesus. You practiced writing your message out in a couple of sentences on why your faith is important to you. You practice saying it out loud to yourself and last week to a church friend. Now it's time to take that message of hope and rest to someone who is weary and looking for rest. So this week, pray for God to put someone in your path 
who needs to hear about Jesus and then go out and share the good news. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.